Hey guys, we're going to start uh, the beginning of chapter 7. Um, chapter 7 primarily deals with painting the paintbrush, um, where it seems kind of boring, but I'm going to start you off with an activity that really shows you how powerful the paintbrush is and some cool stuff you can do with it. So um, this is a fun activity, you'll enjoy it. Um, so go ahead and let's start Photoshop. So open that up. And I'm going to go uh, open. And I'm going to open up a file. I put it on my desktop in chapter seven and it's called snow scene so i'm open up snow scene and when i do you can see it's uh, a snow scene um a guy riding a snowmobile and i believe this is in utah somewhere uh, first thing i'm going to do is just crop this um, just to adjust the orientation a little bit so your crop tool is one two three four five down if you don't see your crop tool, go to window on the menu bar, go to workspace, and number one, make sure you're in, you're in essentials. Number two, reset essentials to bring everything back to its default state. So I'm gonna reset it. It brings everything back to the default state essentials, and I now have the ability to crop it. So I'm gonna get my crop tool right there, and I'm just gonna go clear um, the crop, crop settings right there. Actually, no, let me go Let's go a let's go a 169 aspect ratio right there. Go 169. That's the same as your phone or a TV. All right, so that's 169. I'm just going to grab the corner down to get rid of that rope or whatever's in there, and I'm put it right. Put the the guy on the snowmobile right in the center, or the girl. I don't know if it's a guy or a girl. All right, so then I'm going to commit my transformation, and I'm going to hit Command Plus one time to zoom in. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to paint snowflakes in the background. So probably up to this point, what you would anticipate doing if I said go ahead and paint snowflakes is, you know, you could reset your colors right there, put white on your paintbrush, get your paintbrush there and size it down. And you're maybe putting snowflakes on the canvas like that, right? All right. Get rid of all those. All right, so we're actually going to create a new paintbrush that will paint realistic looking snowflakes. So to do that, I'm going to have to open up an illustration of a snowflake. So I'm going to go File, Open, and looking inside my Chapter 7 folder, I'm looking for Snowflake 1. All right, here is a picture of a snowflake. Now, as I open up this file and I look at the layer panel, it says Index. And if you remember from a couple lessons ago, when you see that, it has to do with color mode. So simply go to Image on the menu bar, go to Mode, and then just go to RGB Color. It changes that to a normal background layer. We now can unlock it, okay? So unlock your background layer. All right, so I think this is just a snowflake on a transparent background, but I'm just gonna select it and move it around a little bit, and it's not. It's, when I got this image, they made it look like a transparent background, but it's not. So in order to fix that, I'm gonna mask away what I don't want there. So let's select the black. Fourth button down is your magic wand tool. Okay, I'm going to have a tolerance of, let's go 35 right here, tolerance of 35, and then I'm going to click anywhere in the black. You'll see it goes through and it selects my snowflake. That is what's selected. That's all I want selected. And now I'm going to mask it away. So the bottom of your layer panel, that box with a circle in it, click it. Now I should, if I grab my move tool, should be able to move this snowflake around independently on the canvas and there is no checkerboard selected. So make sure you go through that process. Now, um, I'm gonna center this so I can see the snowflake on the canvas. Now, in order to define this as a brush, I simply go to edit on the menu bar, edit on the menu bar, and, oops, hold on, I gotta apply my mask. So this is the option I want, define brush preset, but it's not giving it to me, and that's because I need to apply my mask over here. So let me click off it, and I'm gonna right click the mask box, the little black box, right click it and choose apply layer mask. And now when I go back to the edit menu, I should be able to get define brush preset. And when I do, you'll see it takes a snapshot of the brush or of the picture, and I'm gonna call this snowflake one. All right, now, one key point when you're defining a brush and you want it to be as solid as possible you need to have the color of the object you're making a brush solid black. If it's gray, if it's yellow, if it's red, any other color, 
When you define it, it's gonna look somewhat see-through when you try, try to paint with it. So make sure it's solid black. All right, so with that being said, I'm gonna go back to my snow scene right here. And I've got a giant snowflake brush, way too big. All right, um, actually let's go to, let's reset our workspace and go to our painting workspace because there's gonna be some things we need to do. So go to window on the menu bar, go to workspace, and we're gonna go to painting right there. Go to painting. All right, so that brings up our painting workspace, and I'm gonna reset it as well. So window, workspace, reset painting, so everything is in default mode. All right, so my major focus over here is the brushes, so I'm gonna get rid of my swatches panel right there. So I'm gonna to go to window on the menu bar and uncheck swatches. So now what I see over there is my brushes, um, and I also wanna see my layer panel. Let me see if I can just pull that up. Let me check layer if it's not checked. All right, check, put a check mark next to layers as well because we'll use using that a lot here too. All right, so I have both my brushes and my layers. Now with the brush right here, I'm gonna go ahead and size this thing down. So right there where it says 1060, size that down. Let's try 100 and see what size that gives me on the canvas. Let's try 75. All right, so size of 75. All right, so 75, I've got white as my foreground color. And before I paint anything on my canvas, I'm gonna have you add a layer. So hit the plus button right there to add a layer. And on this layer, we're simply going to click one at a time and put our snowflakes on the canvas, right? All right, a little hard to see, but that's fine. We'll make some adjustments here in a little bit. All right, so if I hide my background layer, you can see I painted snowflakes on that canvas. Um, Let's do something to give it a little more detail. So on layer one, uh, go to FX, and let's just go stroke, and let's go with a grayish stroke, okay? So go in your grays down there. We've got a grayish stroke, size of one looks good, and whoops, hit okay there, and okay there. All right, so you can see the little more detail to your snowflakes on your canvas, and that's what we created just by clicking one at a time. All right, let's go ahead and hide layer one. So hit the eyeball right there and add a layer. So this is layer two. This time we're gonna make some adjustments with the snowflakes. So do you see this little brush button right there up at the top left, right next to the snowflake, the little brush folder I should say, click on that. All right, so we're gonna make some adjustments to the brush itself. So the first thing we can adjust is the brush tip shape and that's what's selected there. You'll see my space is at 10%, which means if I was to drag my brush across the canvas, let me show you. If I was to drag the brush across the canvas up here, you'll see it just puts snowflakes right next to each other. Okay, I'm gonna undo that. Now, but if I go up here to that folder and I bump my spacing out, let me take that out. Yeah, 165% looks good right there. And I go ahead and collapse it. I can drag across the top and it's spacing these out at an equal distance, right? So you do that. So once they're spaced out, let's go ahead and add a stroke to it so you can see it better. So FX stroke and we'll go gray, size of one, hit OK. And you can just see the snowflakes are more defined. Good. Hide that layer, add a new layer. This time go back to that folder and we've got the spacing where we want it. Um, you can also adjust your angle right here. So if I move my angle right there, you'll see it rotates the snowflakes a little bit, but in this particular case, it doesn't make much of a difference because snowflakes are symmetrical. So that one, the angle is not gonna really impact how the snowflakes looks on, uh, for this activity. For other items, it does. All right, so let's go to shape dynamics. So if I click on shape dynamic right there, if you check, hit the check bar, it's one thing, but you can actually click on the word it'll give you some different settings. And the first one you see is size jitter. When you see the word jitter, simply think of variation, size variation. So if I want, as I paint snowflakes across the canvas, if I want them to automatically vary in size, that's done right here. So if I bump this up and I keep going up, you'll see it's giving me varying sizes of snowflakes. So I took mine right up 53, 50%, somewhere around there is fine. Um, you can also choose a min minimum diameter. So go ahead and bump that up. All right, so minimum diameter. Um, I'm gonna leave that at zero. So I have the small, small snowflakes because this will take that away. Um, we can adjust the angle jitter. So if, let's bump that up and adjust the angle like before. 
And let's do the roundness jitter as well. All right, so the roundness jitter will flatten them out a little bit. This gives you a pretty good effect on there. So I'm gonna take that up about 40%. And I'm going to collapse this. And now, on this new layer, let me go ahead and paint across the canvas like this. And as I do, you can see it's giving me additional variation of the appearance. So then uh, let's add the FX uh, stroke. Go with the size one gray, hit OK. And we're given that. All right, so that looks good. All right, hide that layer, add one more. We want to make uh, one or two more adjustments before we move on. So hit uh, the plus button here to add a new layer. Um, go to your toggle the brush panel right there, that little button. This time, go to scattering. So click on the word scattering. And we can scatter. And right now, it's just scattering along my y-axis, my vertical axis. Um, I took that up about 152%. Um, this is your count. So you can have it put multiple snowflakes in there. I like to leave that at one. It gives me more control. Um, and that looks good right there. That's what I want. So now go ahead and paint the snowflakes across your canvas like that. All right, add a stroke. Same settings. Hit OK. Let's add a bevel and emboss as well. So hit FX. Go to bevel and emboss. And depth is, drop that down to about, let's go 75 on the depth, 75. And size, I'm gonna drop the size down as well to, let's try 25. That's looking clean. Um, soften, three looks good. Everything else, leave it default setting, hit okay. All right, so we have snowflakes on our canvas and if you zoom in, that's what you got, right? Now. Not bad. It's kind of a neat way to approach the paintbrush. So go ahead and save this as Snow Scene 1. So I'm going to go to File, Save As, and put in your uh, Chapter 7, or your Desktop folder, 2020 folder, um, Chapter 7, and let's call it Snow Scene 1, and hit Save. All right, so there's my Snow Scene 1. I'm going to go ahead and Close this, close that, don't save. I'm gonna to go to File, Open. Um, open up the snow scene again. This time I'm gonna crop it to a 16 by nine. So just crop up just a little bit like that. All right, we're gonna add eight different snowflakes. So I'm gonna go to File, Open. All right, Snowflake 2. All right, when this snowflake comes in, you'll see it's blue. If you remember what I said about when you define a brush, it needs to be what color? It's black, right? So first thing I want to do is fill that in with black. So I'm going to reset my foreground and background color, make sure my foreground's black, grab my paint bucket, look up here, um, make sure my opacity is 100%, and click on the snowflake. I have now made it black. That's what I want. All right, let's uh, analyze this with our move tool, see if this is actually on a transparent background or not. So as I move it around, it is on a transparent background. So I can simply define the brush at this point. So let's go to Edit. Define brush preset, um, call it Snowflake 2, and hit OK. And I've got a new Snowflake brush. So now I'm going back to Snow Scene. I'm going to add a layer. And I'm not going to have you go step by step with uh, adding a layer, hiding it. I'm just going to apply everything we just did onto this layer. So go ahead and let's put white on your paintbrush. And let's adjust the size to, let's see what 100 looks like. All right, so a size of 100 for this one looks fine to me. Uh, let's go 100. Let's go to our toggle the brush button right there. So click on that folder. Let's go brush tip shape. Let's adjust our spacing up to something that looks good. So about 170 percent on this one, so 170. And angle won't matter here. Um, roundness is 100%, that is fine. Let's go ahead and go to our shape dynamics now. So click the shape dynamics. Let's take the size jitter up. Do something that looks good, about 50% again. Um, angle jitter, let's go ahead and you can adjust that a little bit and modify the angle. I took it to 10%. Roundness jitter doesn't matter. 
let's go to actually go back to shape dynamics. Let's do the roundness jitter. That's what we want. All right, roundness jitter about 50% as well. And let's go to scattering. So click on the word scattering. And let's have the scattering on the Y axis bumped up just a little bit. 200% looks good for this one. And now I'm gonna collapse it. So I have all the settings I want. It's on layer one. Let me go ahead and grab the, paint these snowflakes across my canvas like this. All right, so once I get it how I want, go to FX, add a stroke. Should be the same gray, size one, that's fine. And we're gonna add a bevel and emboss as well. So go to FX, bevel and emboss. And let's see what looks good here. I might have to bump this down just a little bit. Yeah, let's take that down to about 40%. So depth of 40, size, let's take that down to 20, see if that looks a little cleaner. All right, everything else should be fine. So use those settings. We have snowflakes going across our canvas and save this as snow scene two. So file, save as, snow scene two, and hit save. Okay. All right, one more time. We're gonna create one more snowflake and brush and snow scene. So I'm gonna go ahead and open just snow scene again. I'm gonna open up uh, paintbrush or snowflake three right there. All right, so this one, once again, look at the layer panel, it says index. So we know that means let's change the color mode. So go to image on the menu bar, go to mode, and let's go to RGB color. All right, so unlock your background layer now by clicking it. Now, this snowflake only has the tracing of a snowflake. It's not filled in. So we want to go fill that in before we define it. So reset your foreground color to black and white with black as your foreground. Get your paint bucket. Fill in. Oops. Why is this? I know why it is. Let's do. All right. So what I have here, it's not really a transparent background. They're trying to trick me again. So we are going to use color range here to select the black and mask everything else away. So I'm gonna recenter that. Let's go to select on the menu bar. Let's go to color range. And we are going to sample the black. All right, when we sample the black, we're given this. And let me see, I'm gonna want my fuzziness setting high so it can really pick up the edges here. So let's see what 175 looks like. Um, let's go with 175 and see what that gives us. So I'm gonna hit okay. All right, that looks pretty good. Now, because the black is chosen, we simply need to hit our mask button right there. So mask it. All right, it applies that layer mask, or adds that layer mask, and let's uh, apply the layer mask. So right click that black box, right click it, and choose apply layer mask. All right, it's now applied, and now we have the ability to go through and fill these areas with black. So get your paintbrush or bucket. I'm gonna dump paint there. Um, let me go back. All right, so you see how that didn't fill in right along the edges? It has to do with my tolerance setting right here. So let me hit Command Z. Let me take this up to 100 and see what happens. All right, so now when I fill in, still didn't do it. Let me take it up to 200. Why is that not giving me I mean, 300? How will, how, how will it go? I've never gone 300 on this tool. 255 is high. Let's try that. All right, let's, uh, well, I don't really want to go through and paint all these. All right, let me see if I click in that area. Okay, what I just did was that. All right, so once you fill it in, click on the little line you see there, and it should go back in and fill everything else for you. I was afraid I was going to have to go in with the paint bucket and fill it in, and I didn't want it, or the paintbrush, and I didn't want to do that. So once you have it all black, you can now define it. So let's go to Edit on the menu bar and let's go to define brush preset right there. This is now snowflake three and hit okay. And we're gonna go back to our snow scene right there. Let's crop it like we did before. So hit your crop button, bring it in just a little bit to crop out that rope and commit and get your paintbrush and the paintbrush. That's our paintbrush, okay? I have the snowflake brush right there now. Notice, if for whatever reason you switch brushes and you're trying to get back to it, you can simply look over um, on your brush panel over here and the most recent brush you created will always be on the bottom. So you can see all three or mine are over there. 
Um, so now I'm going to put white as my foreground color. I'm going to take my brush size to, let's go, let's see what 100 looks like. I like 100, so we're going to go with 100. We're going to add a layer, um, and we're going to go to our toggle the brush button right there, and brush tip shape. We're going to adjust our spacing right about 165 looks good. Shape dynamics, we're going to go there. We're going to adjust our jitter. So it varies the size up to about 50 again. Um, skip middle, minimum diameter, angle jitter, bump that up to about 10 again. And roundness jitter, let's take that up as well. Uh, right about 40 on this one looks good. So 40, and let's go to scattering. Um, I'm going to adjust the scattering. Let's take it up to, ooh, that's a lot. Uh, let's go 195 or 190 on this one, 190 on our Y axis, and collapse it. And now simply paint your snowflakes across the canvas like this, okay? Once you do that, add a stroke, go with the same gray stroke, hit OK, and let's add bevel and emboss. All right, and let's bump our depth up just a little bit. Go to about 75, looks good. And you can leave everything else as is and hit OK. And why don't we just add a drop shadow for good measure here too. So go to FX, go to drop shadow. And you can see by adding a drop shadow, I'm just gonna leave opacity at 70, angles 30. All those settings right there look good. So I'm gonna leave it alone, hit OK. And you can see it even gives more definition once you add a drop shadow. All right, so save that as Snow Scene 3. So file, um, we're gonna save as Snow Scene 3, and hit save. Okay. All right, so there are three snow scenes. All right, I'm gonna have you create one more brush, but this time it's not a snowflake. So go ahead and close that. Don't save, close that. All right, so we're gonna open up a couple files that are out there. We're gonna open up um, the, a dollar sign. So go ahead and open up the dollar sign right there, and you're given this dollar sign. We're gonna unlock it. And first thing I want you to do is crop it because we're going to get rid of the vector stock right there. So get your crop tool. Let's change our aspect ratio to should go with a, where's my one by one? Just go with one by one. That's a perfect square. So one by one. And we'll just bring it in to, to the point where we have the words cropped out and then commit your transformation. All right. So let's go ahead and get rid of the white. So magic wand tool, 35 should work fine. Got that, and my add to button is chosen, so now I can select there and there and hit delete and command D to deselect it. All right, so I'm left with the dollar sign. I know that's on a transparent background, which is what I want. And now I simply need to define this shape. So edit on the menu bar, define brush preset, and because it's black, it's gonna give me a good brush and dollar sign is what I want. So I hit, oh, I'm gonna get rid of the JPEG. Okay, so this is now my paintbrush. Now I'm going to open up a second file. So file, open, and all right. So I'm a big Michigan State basketball fan. This is Draymond Green. He played there, um, now plays for Golden State. So I know he's making big money. So I'm going to paint green dollar signs across this canvas, green or gold. Um, now let me go gold to match the uh, Golden State Warriors color. So I'm going to sample that yellow right there. So let me get my eyedropper tool and I'm going to sample that yellow right there. So that is now what's on my foreground. And I'm going to get my paintbrush and I know I have the dollar sign. So let me just pick the size I want. I'm going to drop this down. Let me try 100 to see what that go looks like. Too big. Let's try 65. All right, that looks better. All right, so I have a dollar sign size 65. And I'm going to add a layer before I do anything. And I'm going to go through and make a lot of the same settings I did with the snowflake. So let me go in there and hit that button. All right, brush tip shape. I'm going to bump that up. Let me take that to a spacing that looks good. Um, right around 200% looks good. I'm at 199. Um, shape dynamics right there. I'm going to brush my size jitter is going to go up to, let's go to 50% again. That's been a good number for us. So 50%. 
Let's go minimum diameter. I don't want to mess with that. Let's go angle jitter. It does make a big difference here because a dollar sign is not symmetrical. Um, roundness jitter, let's bump that up just a little bit. And let's go to our scattering as well. So click on scattering, bump your scattering up. So it's scattering along the Y axis. Um, I'm at 100% there. That looks good. And on a layer right there, let's just go ahead and paint dollar signs along here, okay? All right, I don't like that yellow color. Um, it's too much, it brings too much yellow in there. So I'm gonna hit Command Z to undo it. And let me go to a green. So let me click on the foreground color. Let me go to my greens. So pick a green that looks good. I'm not sure if this one will look good yet, but it still has, brush still has the same settings, so let me go across there now. And I've got that. And that looks a little messy right there, so let me undo that. I want to see who my... Alright, so got the dollar signs right there. Let's go ahead and add some effects and then we'll be done. So let's go to the FX. Let's go to stroke. Alright, we need to choose what color we want. Definitely don't want gray. Gray looks horrible. Um, let me see what the bright yellows look like. Bright yellowish white. And let me go size one. Three is way too big. Cancel that. So I want one in the size right there. Um, let me change the color to, what does white look like? Boy, this just, stroke doesn't look good. For whatever reason, This when we define, find this brush, it really gave me a jagged edge. So we're going to hit cancel on the stroke. Stroke doesn't look good. Um, we're gonna, let's see what a glow looks like. So FX, because a glow, we can blur it out a little bit. More because, so let's go outer glow. And let's change our color to, let's try the yellows first. All right, and then we're gonna to have to drop the opacity. Oops, hit okay. Drop our opacity just a little bit. Um, spread is way too high, so let me jump, drop the spread down. And the size needs to be much smaller as well. Let's take that to a three, see what three looks like. Um, at a three, we're gonna to have to bump our, let's go to normal on the uh, color. We're gonna start normal, right there. So that's normal. Let me bump the opacity up. All right, so I like that higher. It makes it pop just a little bit. Let me see what 100% looks like. I like 100%. Um, it looks okay with the color. And you can mess around with some other settings as well. So if I go to FX and try a bevel and a boss on this, um, we can see what that looks like. And you can adjust the size however you see fit. All right, that looks pretty good there. You could also mess around with some other um, Let's go drop shadow. That looks good. Okay. All right. So that's how you use a. That's how you can create custom brushes using some shapes. So just remember they need to be black um, on a transparent or white background for it to work. So uh, let's save this as Draymond. So, or save this as money. So file. Let's go to save as. And we'll call it money. And hit save. That's it. All right. Hope you had fun. You're done. Thanks, guys.